Hi, welcome to another IGCSE physics video. This is section 1.8, which is about scalars and vectors. In this video, we will learn about scalar and vector quantities, vector addition and subtraction, resultant vectors, and finally, we will also learn about the parallelogram rule to find resultant vectors. So what is a scalar quantity? Well, from previous videos, we know that it's just a physical quantity which has some magnitude. And we also know that scalar quantities don't have a specified direction. They only have a magnitude. So what are some examples of scalar quantities in physics? Well, one of them is distance. And we know that distance is measured in meters most of the time in physics. So you could give an example that this line that I've drawn has a distance of 0.1 meter. And another scalar could be speed which is simply the rate at which you cover some distance or the amount of time that it takes you to cover some distance. So let's say this was one meter and this car that I have here took a time of one second to cover it. Then the speed that this car would have is one meter per second as it takes the car one meter to travel one second. What's another example of a scalar quantity? Well, another one is mass, which is a measure of the quantity or the amount of matter in some object so let's say we have this rock, or you could have some puddle of water on some ground. So let's say that this rock has some mass of two kilograms. This is the mass of this rock. Now let's talk about vector quantities. A vector quantity is similar to a scalar quantity. It has a magnitude and it's a physical quantity, which is what makes it similar to a scalar quantity. But what makes it different from a vector quantity compared to a scalar quantity is that a vector quantity has a specified direction as well, which a scalar quantity does not. So what are some examples of vector quantities? One example of a vector quantity could be displacement, which is simply the distance that an object moves or displaces in a specified direction. So let's say you displaced this distance of one meter and you displaced towards east, which is gonna be your direction. So we can say that your displacement in terms of units was one meter east Another vector quantity could be velocity. What's velocity? It's the amount of time that it takes you to displace some distance in a specified direction. And in this case, we're traveling a distance of one meter towards east. And let's say that it took us two seconds to cover that distance. So our velocity in this case would be one meter over two seconds eastbound, which simplifies to 0.5 meter per second east. So that's our velocity. Another example could be your weight which is a measure of the amount of force that the Earth pulls on you, which is proportional to the gravitational constant, so that like other objects, you can accelerate at 10 meters per second squared. So let's say if you were on the Earth, then you'd have an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, as this is the gravitational constant of the Earth. And let's say you were falling, then the Earth would have a force exerted on you so that it can pull you down towards the surface of the Earth. And let's say your mass was 10 kilograms, quite light, then your weight would equal your mass times the gravitational constant and 10 times 10 is 100 so your weight would be 100 newtons and since you're traveling downwards towards the earth you can say down now let's talk about vector addition and subtraction so let's say in scenario one you were walking on some sidewalk and let's say that on this sidewalk you covered a distance of two meters from here to here. And let's say that the direction is towards east. So you'd end up here after some time when you finish that distance. Now let's say you displaced again in this direction. So first you arrived at this point and then you displaced again to this point. And let's say that this distance was three meters. So how much distance did you travel overall? Well, we know that one of the vectors would be two meters eastbound. And then you added another vector to your journey, which is three meters eastbound. So we know that this person traveled a total distance of two meters east plus another three meters east, giving us five meters east. So your resultant vector in this scenario due to vector addition that we just did would be five meters east. So that's the total distance you covered by traveling from here all the way till here. And that was in the eastwards direction. Let's look at scenario two now. Let's say that you were driving a car and let's say you were heading in this direction. And let's say your velocity from this point was 30 meters per second towards east. And then let's say you turned around your car and then you went backwards at 20 meters per second. So you went for 30 meters per second all the way till here. And then you turned your car back at 20 meters per second. 
So what would your resultant velocity be? Well, we know that your initial velocity from here to here was 30 meters per second towards east. So let's say that the direction towards east was positive. But then you suddenly turned your car around and you decided to travel back at 20 meters per second towards west. Well, since you changed your direction towards west and you started traveling at 20 meters per second, we can say that your velocity was minus 20 meters per second because you changed your direction, which also changes the sign. So your resultant velocity would be 10 meters per second east. So in this scenario, we have done vector subtraction because in this scenario, we were traveling in east, but then we started traveling at west. But for the most part, we traveled towards east as 30 is more than 20. So we ended up with a positive value, which showed us that we were overall traveling towards east throughout our whole journey. So far, we've only calculated the resultant vectors in the first dimension. Now we're going to talk about 2D vectors and the parallelogram rule. 2D vectors are vectors that occur in two dimensions. So let's say you had a diagonal vector. And we know that in this vector, we have a horizontal component and we also have a vertical component. And if we combine these two together, we get a diagonal. In this case, we have a right angle and we don't have to use a parallelogram rule. We just make a square and the end of the vector points at this point of the square. But well, let's say you had a different angle between two vectors that determined your resultant vector. In this case, this angle is less than 90 degrees. Or if you know from mathematics, it's an acute angle. In this case, we can draw a parallelogram by making some dots and turning those two vectors into a parallelogram. And then the addition of these two vectors will give us a vector that touches this point and then we can connect the dots. So this would be our resultant vector that would end at this point. Similarly, if we had a vector that looked something like this, so we have one direction that's going in this way and another direction which is going in this way. Well, in this case, we can draw the parallelogram again. It would so look something like this. And then we know since it's in these two directions, the vector is gonna pass through the middle towards this point of the parallelogram. So we can connect the dots again and we get the resultant vector which points at this point. So in this case, we had our right angle. And in this case, we had an acute angle. But in this case, we had an obtuse angle, which is greater than 90 degrees. Now let's apply the parallelogram rule and 2D vectors to a real life scenario. Let's say you had a boat in the middle of some river. And let's say that your compass told you, this is my little compass, and it told you that you were heading at a direction of 90 degrees or simply east. But then let's say that there was a current that pushed the boat sideways. So let's say that you had a vector that pulled you this way. So it deviated your route from going towards east. And let's say that the velocity of the stream that was pushing you towards the side was two meters per second. And let's say that the velocity of your boat heading towards the east vector was four meters per second. So let's draw this on a 2D diagram to make sense of this scenario. We know that you have a velocity of four meters per second, which is pointed towards east or 90 degrees. And there's also another velocity which is pointing you downwards, which is two meters per second. And this one is towards south. So based on this diagram, we know that your resultant velocity would be at a crook direction, which would point towards southeast. And using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find the magnitude of the resultant force that you get from this motion. So you'd simply use c squared equals to four squared plus two squared, giving you c squared is equal to 16 plus four, which is 20. And the distance would turn out to be 4.47 meters per second. And we know that your direction could be measured using a protractor, or you could just write southeast because that's the general direction at which your resultant vector would point at. So your resultant velocity would be 4.47 meters per second southeast. And this is it for section 1.8. I hope you were able to learn the concepts of scalar and vector quantities and how you can find the resultant vectors, whether it's based on some right triangle vector or it's based on the parallelogram rule. Leave a comment in the comment section and provide feedback so I can improve my videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.